Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. In this tutorial, I want to go over how you can create CSV files, uh, downloadable CSV files, from the Xano APIs. So on my screen here, you can see I've created an API endpoint. And you see there's already um, two functions here. They're both uh, set HTTP header functions. You can find those by going to utility functions and going to HTTP header. So I've already populated these. Um, the first one is to set the content uh, disposition header. And it's saying attachment, semicolon, file name, and then the actual file name. And I'll just open the text editor up for you. We just have hard coded in here, uh, example.csv. Uh, the second one is I'm setting the content type to text slash CSV. Uh, so those are essential for actually generating a downloadable CSV file through the API. So next, let's go about seeing what else, uh, what type of logic we need to do in the function stack. So first, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable here. And we'll call this one CSV. So in Xano, we have a filter that basically is called CSV create. It creates a CSV format data stream from a list of column names and their corresponding data rows. So if we select this, it looks like we need to uh, populate our rows. It has separator, enclosure, and escape options here. Uh, for this, I'm just going to leave it all as the default, and that'll accomplish what I need. But I need to get the rows uh, and also the columns or headers of my values. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'll just drag this up here. So first, as said, we need to get headers. So let's actually, for this example, just create some headers. Uh, I'm going to create a variable here, and we'll call this uh, headers. And for this, I can just type uh, some JSON headers right here on the line, and it'll create it for me in Xano. So I might do something uh, super simple. I might say name, uh, age, location, email. So those will be our headers. And you can see, once I close that uh, array bracket there, I can just use the import JSON feature, and it'll, it will create an array. So now that we have our headers, let me go ahead and drag this up. We need some rows or values to go in there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to data manipulation, create a variable here. And let's call this our rows. And once again, I'll use the same format. So we had name. We'll go ahead um, and say Andrew. We'll say age is going to be 30. Location, we'll go ahead and say Los Angeles. And then email, we'll say andrew at email.com. So I'll go ahead and hit that. Um, so those will be our rows. So now that we have our headers and rows, uh, very simple, of course, and I'll show you a couple more complex things after this. Uh, when we go into our CSV variable, you can see here the value we want to start with our headers. And then if we come back into our CSV create filter, where the rows are required, we're actually going to want to select our rows variable hit save. One final thing here, I need to make sure that I'm actually returning our CSV variable that's being created. Okay, so now that I have all that there, let's go ahead. Um, I can show you there's two ways we can do this. We can either do it from run and debug. I can run it here. And you can see here would be the result of that variable, but I can actually download this CSV. And if you can see here in the bottom left, that's created. So I can open this. And when this opens, you can see I have a very simple uh, CSV file here in my numbers application. It is formatted uh, nice for me into a table, um, but that just created a CSV. We can also do it on a live endpoint. So if I actually grab this endpoint URL uh, and come to my other tab here and paste this in, you can see here is a new CSV that is being downloaded. Once again, I can open this defaults to my numbers application. And there is uh, my nicely formed C CSV. So that is a basic example. I want to show you a couple different examples. And these ones I've already built. So I'll actually just talk through them. First, we'll go about CSV uh, from a table. So if we go into here, you can see I have additional logic in order to accomplish this. So first and foremost, I have a table of MLB players that is over a 1,000 records long. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is get the keys 
from that variable. And to do that, we just need to get the keys from the very first item in the array. So you can see I use dot notation in the index of zero to actually get the columns or headers there. Next, I'm just creating an empty variable that's an array data type of the rows. So we can populate this next. So now just a for each loop through my model variable, we're gonna call that, our each iteration is gonna be called row. And now within this for each loop, the first thing we're doing is getting the values with this object function. So the object is going to be each iteration, so this row singular variable. Uh, we'll return the result as values. And then we'll do an array function, add to end of an array. The existing variable, remember, is what used to be our established uh, empty array variable, rows. Uh, and we're adding values to it, which we're getting for each iteration right here. So that will populate uh, this entire rows variable with all of our values. Lastly, we're doing our create variable. We're creating the CSV. Call our columns variable is going to be our headers, our CSV create filter, and then our variable rows in there. So now actually, let's go ahead and just grab this endpoint URL and let's open this up or let's download it first, I should say. So once again, this uh, file is just called example. Let me go ahead and open this. And you can see it will open this nice long uh, CSV file. And once again, there's over a thousand records in here. And when I put this in a snippet, I'll make sure not to include all these records. I'll just include a hundred or so, but just so you can see it as an example. Um, great. So. Uh, when this is a snippet, you can easily swap, swap in whatever table you want. Um, the easiest way to make sure everything basically still talks to each other would be to first add in um, this query all records from whatever table you want right here. So let's say I wanted to do user. You would go to database request, query all records, you'd pick that table. And then I would just go ahead and make the variable name the same as it is here in number one. And then you could hit save. And then you could either hide or even delete this and everything should basically still uh, work and talk to each other. Um, but for the purpose of this, I'm going to delete this and unhide that. Let's go back and the final example is building a CSV from a JSON input. So this was actually a specific question from uh, a customer and you can see that the logic is actually exactly the same here. The only difference is we have this JSON uh, list input type, and that's what we're looping through. So there's no query all records. Everything else is the same. So for example, I tested this out once just with some uh, example data here. So if I were to run this, we could go ahead and just download that CSV here, and we can open this up. And here you go, here is our CSV. One other thing that I want to show is how you can make the file name dynamic. So in our set header, we actually just have this uh, essentially just hard coded in as demo.csv. You definitely need the .csv for this, but we can change the uh, name here. And I can do that with, I can make this dynamic with the sprintf uh, filter. So with sprintf, it does variable text substitution and the variable uh, that it looks for is this percent %s combo. So I'm just going to replace that in there. Hit save. Let's add a filter in here. Call it sprintf and you can see it needs arguments. So let me go ahead and update this at first and I'll just save this. And let's add a text input here and we'll just call this file name. Of course, it doesn't have to be an input. You could get it from somewhere within your function stack. Um, but that's just an example here. So if we come back to our set header and into our sprintf, we need to add an additional argument uh, for each of our percent %s variables in there. So here I might just go ahead and say file name. Let's go ahead and save this. And now let's run this again. And now we have this file name variable. So I might just go ahead and say um, tutorial video here for my file name. Let's go ahead and run this. And you can see when I download it, now we have tutorial video.csv as the name. And when we go ahead and open this back up, 
you can see that's the name of our file. I'll even drag it down a little bit so you can see that. So once again, there were three different examples of creating a CSV. Uh, this last one here was CSV from JSON input. I also showed how we can make the file name dynamic with the sprintf filter. Let's go back. We also talked about creating a CSV from one of your Xano database tables using the query all records and some additional logic. And we started out with just a very basic example where I created just some simple arrays here for the headers and rows, but we also covered the set header functions, how we need to do the content disposition and the file type, file name, and also the content type for text CSV. So I hope that's helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all in a snippet so you can go ahead and either preview it yourself or download it um, and install it into your Xano instance if you wanna use it. And I'll make sure to go ahead and link that up in the video's description. So thank you guys for watching. If this was helpful or you liked it, please go ahead, like the video, subscribe to our channel um, and share it with someone who might want to use this as well.